Hello there. Welcome to part three of this end-to-end -end implementation of WordPress website. If you have not checked the part one and two, I request you to check the video description and check the link to check part one and part two because part three is the continuation after part two. In part one, we have completed WordPress instance creation in Amazon Light Cell. In part two, we have completed the how to register a custom domain in Route 53. And now in this part three, I will be showing you how to create hosted zone and configure that. So in this part three, basically, I will tell you two use cases. Because in your organization, you will find that in AWS accounts, they have AWS organization. What does it mean? For more details, you search for the AWS organization, what it is. But for now, let me tell you that in organization, AWS organization, you can arrange multiple AWS accounts as per your business domains or functional domains or the technical capabilities. In this session, I will be showing you how can you create hosted zone of a domain when the domain is in different AWS account. But even if you think very simply that, okay, you have one AWS account, you have registered a domain in that AWS account under AWS root 53, and you are just creating hosted zone manually. It is the same thing. Here is the place where you clicked on this register domains and you will get the domain you have registered over here. So I have registered this brandandmarket.com, okay, in my AWS account, one of the AWS account, and we'll be creating the hosted zone in different account. Different account means which account? The account I have created, the Amazon Light Cell WordPress instance. Let me take you to that account. This is the account where I have created the Amazon Light Cell WordPress instance. So we will create the hosted zone over here because you know that in part one session, I have shown that how you have launched this WordPress website. And we are accessing this WordPress website with the static IP. And what we want that we have registered our custom domain and we want to access this website with our custom domains. So in the session, I will be showing you how you can map our custom domain to this WordPress instance. So let's proceed. You may be knowing that when you are registering a domain in AWS root 53, once the domain is registered, it will automatically create the hosted zone. But what if that you don't want to create the hosted zone when you registered that domain? because you are not hosting anything. You have just registered the domain for some purposes. And it can also happen that you registered the domain from one of your AWS account, but you want to create the hosted zone in another AWS account. And you know that you can create AWS organization where you have a master account and you have the sub accounts as well. You want to register your domain in one account but you want to create the hosted zone or your applications are hosted in another account. Okay, so the use case which I will be showing you in this session is that I have one domain that is registered in one, do one account, one AWS account, and I want to create a hosted zone manually in another account. Okay, so here you see that I don't have anything in my hosted zone over here. Okay, before that, if you want to, uh, you have to log in in your AWS console and search for root 53 and it will take you over here. So if you, once you are landed on this root 53, click on the register domain, that is the left side panel, click over here and you see that I don't have any domains registered here or the particular domain which I am looking for creating the hosted zone, I don't have it here. Okay, let's check the hosted zone. Clicked over the hosted zone and I also don't have uh, any hosted zone or the hosted zone, the domain for the hosted zone I am looking for. Okay, let me show you where 
the domain is actually registered. So let me go to my another AWS account and show you where my domain is actually registered. This is the account, a separate AWS account where my domain is actually registered. Under registered domain, you see that I have this domain brandandmarket.com. I'm just copying this domain name and I'm going back to the another account where I want to create the hosted zone. So let's go back. Okay, here I want to create the hosted zone in this account. So simply click on create hosted zone. Add the domain name over here. Simply add the description. It is optional, but just I'm adding it over here. I have just copied the hosted zone, uh, the domain name only. Okay. It is the public hosted zone. Okay. I'm not adding any tag, but if you want for a particular project, definitely you can go for and you just type this uh, like key is project and you add the value over here, but I'm not adding it now. So removing this and click on create hosted zone. There are two default records have been created. First one is NS name server and second one is SOA which is start of authority. These two records are the mandatory one when you are registering a hosted zone. Now in some cases where you have your domain registered with AWS root 53 but your website or the application is actually being hosted by another provider which is non AWS one. Suppose you are hosting your WordPress website in GoDaddy or some other providers. You have to take their name servers and you have to add their name servers over here. So just select that and click on edit record and this is the place where you have to replace the AWS name servers with that service provider's name server's value. So your domain will be pointing to those name servers and you will be able to access your application with this domain on. Now you have our hosted zone created. If you click on this hosted zone, which is brand and market, you get these two default records. So what is our next step? What we basically want is that we should, when we put this brand and market.com, we should get our website over here. So we have to map this thing. So let's copy this IP address from here and go in this hosted zone. Click on create record. Okay. Now in create record, we see that we have a record name, which is uh, showing a box and then brand and market. So we are not entering over here anything. Simply we are creating a, an A record, which is routes traffic to an IPv4 address and some AWS resources. So basically we want to route the traffic to this WordPress instance. So that's why I have entered uh, this uh, static IP address of that instance in this value box and simply click create records. And you see that we have one more record of A type, which is actually pointing to this 174, the static IP address, which is the static IP address. This is the one. Well, now I will copy this brandandmarket.com and we'll browse it in an incognito window. Let's open an incognito window and put it over here. Yes. So it is our website, the WordPress instance, which we created and launched. It was showing, this website was showing previously with the static IP. Now I am able to browse it with this brand and my, okay. So till now we have seen that how to link our WordPress instance with the domain name. Now the next step will be, let's configure this a WordPress website a bit. So if you know that how to configure this WordPress website, then great. Otherwise, let me show you. Okay. So once you have this WordPress website, if you just 
puts a domain name which is brandandmarket.com slash WP admin and it will take you to this admin page here you have to log in now but we have not seen any username and password so far right because in light cell it is a managed service and it installed WordPress and the uh, but server whatever is required of its own it didn't ask you for any username and password now let me show you that where you will get the username and password initially created for your login okay let's go to the light cell portal over here so it is our uh, aws tech guide demo wp1 which is running here so let's open click on this terminal icon and it is opening so our purpose is to get the initial username and password which bitnami has created for this wordpress login okay now to do that you have to run, run a command over here and for your benefit i have kept all the commands under this github repository so i will share this link in the description box below but for now let's check here and these are the step i will come to this step later because it is our next step and here run below command to check your wordpress credential in bitnami okay so our command is sudo cat and this bitnami credential so let's go back to our bitnami portal and paste it over here press enter you see that the default username and password is this user and this password so by default the username is always user and the password they generated okay it is recommended that once you first log in with this credential you create a new user create a new password and give that the administrator role and delete this user for security purpose so let's use this so it is our user and i am copying this password over here is user and here is the password click on login and you are inside the wordpress admin portal well and as you see that it is asking for that wordpress 5.8 version has been released so, so the first thing i will do it's quickly that please update now you saw it was in few seconds only so it is so fast okay you, you can check that what is new in this 5.8 but we are uh, moving ahead of that okay our main po uh, focus is that we have got this very initial uh, wordpress uh, installation where we have this default theme installed you know that you can add themes over here and activate it and it will show as your website you can configure it we are not going for that okay what is our purpose that as i said that whatever the media content we will store in wordpress website we don't want to keep in the wordpress server wordpress server means the wordpress instance which has been created we don't want to keep our media contents over there media contents mean the audio video file or images whatever you upload in your uh, wordpress website so where we will store we want to store the media files in aws s3 so why i should store my AW, uh, media file in aws s3 instead of putting that in same um, wordpress server instance the reason is if you keep your uh, media file separately in s3 and create the cloud front distribution fetching your uh, media files is much faster okay the time it takes to fetch from the server again and again and the time it takes to fetch from the cloud front distribution your media files are much faster and i will show you the secure way of doing that okay now if you remember before login to this uh, wordpress admin portal i said that it is recommended that you change your user the first thing 
So let's go to this user, click on all user. You see this user already created. So do one thing, create a new user, give a name, suppose new user, okay? And uh, definitely uh, you put a username that is, uh, sorry, email ID that is, I'm just putting over here, so mad aws tech guy .com. Give a first name, my new user. Okay, now generate password, you, you put your password or I'm just keeping this password. Okay, so, Let me hide it, okay? Now, make sure that the role is administrator because you are creating this you new user for the administrator and you will delete the user which was the default administrator, okay? So, click on add new user. We have, we have added this user now, okay? Click over this edit. What way I'm showing this, display name publicly as you do never select the display name as your user id okay because it is very easy for the hacker to get your username and then they look up for the password don't make it easy for them that they know your username easily okay so display name publicly show any name other than the user it is a good practice okay so i'm just updating this username so again i'm going back to the all user and i'm deleting this user so where can i delete this user because i i cannot delete this user the reason is it is showing not showing me the option because i have logged in as this user definitely if i have logged in with user i cannot delete myself so what it is expecting that let's log out put the new username, the new password, great, you have logged in and you go to your users, all users, okay, now it is showing your delete user. Uh, click over here, attribute all content to this new user, means to yourself, and when you are de deleting this user, confirm deletion, and you are secure now because you know that this is the user you created and it is not a default user. Okay, perfect. So let's log out from here and our website is working fine. And I will show you in the next step how to create and configure SSL certificate for your website. Currently, we don't have the SSL certificate. We will create the SSL certificate in Amazon Certificate Manager and we'll configure the hosted zone in the next session. Thank you for watching this session. If you have any query, please comment. See you in our next session. Thank you.